We went and harvested all of those squash from the field, the Lofthouse Landrace Maxima. And so now we're here to decide which one of them we're going to save for seeds. And I like to taste every squash in every generation before I save seeds from it. This particular variety of squash, I have been tasting the seeds for 12 years now before saving seeds from them. So I expect every squash here to taste beautiful and, and be really, really nice as far as saving seeds from, but let's look at them. I know that this one right here has a problem because some animal went inside of it and ate the insides out of it. And the squash healed up, and so it would probably be good to eat for humans, but there's no seeds in it, so we'll just compost that one right off the bat. And there's one squash here, which rotted on the end. And part of the reason why that might have rotted is because these squash were ready to harvest about three weeks ago but we left them in the field waiting for me to come and look at them. So that might have rotted just because it was in the field so long. And I recommend the squash be picked as soon as the skin is too hard if I tap on them for my fingernails to make a mark on them. And if they're that hard, then I, I say that they're perfectly ready to harvest. And they can be stored in the, in the house, just in a dry place on a shelf where it's about room temperature or in the shed. At my place, I store them for about a month in the greenhouse, just so that they're someplace dry and out of the, out of the freezing weather. So this one, again, I'm not gonna save seeds from it because it, it didn't store well for whatever reason. Then we have this little micro squash. And I don't like little micro squash because that's not really my target market. My target market is for a squash about this big, about 10 to 12 pounds. And this one's closer to maybe four pounds or three pounds, something like that. So I'm not gonna save seeds from that one, except that, see how dark green this squash is? That's a trait that there's only one other squash that has that dark green trait. And so I might save seeds from something like this just to maintain some genetic diversity, even though it's not my, my most favorite squash. So let's choose one which I think would be my favorite most squash. Probably this one. <laughs> oh, that's got that little button end, which means that it won't store very well or it won't store as long as some of them that don't have the button in. So let's do a next most favorite. There we go. <laughs> so this is our next most favorite. So for storage, I like to cut those, cut these off. At my place, I use the little nippers, but for Mendocino, we're gonna use big ones. And I'm just cutting that off because it stores better because because this stem holds a lot of moisture and the moisture will tend to rot. And so if I cut it off very close to the fruit, then, it, then they won't rot, rot so quickly. So another thing about landrace gardening that I really enjoy is landrace gardening is about doing for ourselves what we can do for ourselves rather than depending on an industrial machine to do, do it for us. And my pruning shears are a prime example of that because they broke one day on a Saturday night and there was no store open. And so I made a handle for my pruning shears. And that has come to symbolize for me the idea of doing for myself what I can do for myself rather than depending on the industrial machine. It's been 20 years now that these have been like this and I'm perfectly happy and hold them as a reminder of how that I can do for myself. Cutting the squash open. So then look at the inside. It's a nice, beautiful orange color. Orange color typically means beautiful flavor. And so I'm happy with that. 
And on this stem end, there's a good, a good amount of flesh around that stem end, which means it's going to store well. And so let's just take off a little piece for tasting. And I like a little piece. about this big, half inch thick, that I can just drop in a frying pan. So I'll do another one. Cut off the peduncle, kind of close to the stem, or to the fruit. Slice it open. So see this trait here that the stamen on the fruit is poking out and it's great big? I haven't noticed that that is detrimental to the storage of the squash. So I'm not selecting for or against that. It's just something that, that happens. And Whoa, pretty squash. I'll just take off a little slice of it. Another thing I like to do is I like to to taste each of them raw as well because sometimes I'll find a flavor that I really don't like very much when it's raw and so I can I can select against that without going through the effort of cooking it. Both of those are just fine. Nice shape. So as we look at these squash, some of them are round shape, some of them are the Hubbard shape, some of them are more of a football shape. I don't really care what the shape is. What I'm interested in is productivity and flavor. And as long as those two things are, are really going well, then I'm perfectly happy with the squash. I don't know if I'm going to like this one very much because it's got a lot of green in it. The green doesn't tend to be as flavorful as the orange, but we'll, we'll cook it up and see what it tastes like. Maybe take a slice closer into the middle. It's the same way all the way through, so, so a, a green layer and then an orange layer. And so we'll just taste it and see what we get. So this is number three. And I'm cooking these on a, in a skillet in some ghee because it's really fast to cook them that way. And that's how I eat them anyway. And so I might as well cook them by the same method as, as how I'm going to be cooking them in real life instead of just when I'm seed saving. So at this point, what I like to do with the seeds is scoop them out into like a colander. And so I'll get the seeds in a bunch of pulp and then run them under water. And if the colander has big holes in it, then the seeds will be stuck in the colander and all this pulp can go down the, with the rinse water. And then spread them out to dry. And squash seeds are like tomato seeds in that you could also ferment them for a day or two. And that will help the, the pulp to become easier to separate from the seeds. And either way, dry them as quick as possible because mold is an enemy to seeds. And so we want to get them, them dry and not just a little bit dry, but really dry because I receive seeds a lot of times that look dry on the outside, but they've been wet inside and they molded. One way that I can, that I test for seed dryness is to bite the seed. And if it, if it mushes, it's too wet to be storing, but if it cracks and breaks, then it, it's good for storage. These squash, we're gonna sit them in a dry place for about a month or two because we wanna eat them. And the flavor gets better if they're stored for a month or two. But also the seeds will continue to mature inside the fruits after we picked them. After about a month or two, they're as mature as they're going to get. So it's kind of a dual purpose curing. And curing isn't anything fancy or that you have to worry about. 
just put them someplace dry and and leave them alone and and out of the sun because the sun could burn them and cook them and but just the shady spot that's dry it's like you have a cooking show <laughs> cooking with <laughs> chef joseph all right so now for the big taste test we put them we put them on the plate in the same order that they came out on the table so we'll just taste them and see what we like Good squash. More flavorful. Decent squash. <laughs> so I, I would save seeds from this one and this one, and I probably wouldn't save seeds from this one. And I already prejudged it before we cooked it because of the, the green color in it. And, and that's just based on experience that I I like the darker oranges because I think they're more tasty than the greens or the whites in the squash. 